The topic that we're going to be discussing today is Unit 1.2, Day 2, which is factoring polynomials and identifying its terms. So we're going to be looking at some polynomials and identifying some, some terms and kind of factoring those two as well. So the first thing that I want you to write down would be our objective. And, you know, for our objective today, we're going to factor polynomials by finding the greatest common factor um, and then identifying the linear and quadratic terms of a polynomial. So as we go through this, we're going to kind of redefine common factors and then kind of understand and identify our linear and quadratic terms. So as with most of these, he's kind of figured out that we're going to have some kind of vocab that we're going to be focusing on and using throughout the video. And so the first thing that we're going to be discussing um, is what we would consider a polynomial. Now we defined polynomial in our last video, but we're going to kind of look at another definition that we can use for a polynomial. A polynomial would be a monomial or a single term um, or the sum of monomials. So below here we have an example of a polynomial. So here it's four terms, and so we separate each one individually. But the idea is that we call these things in anything like this a polynomial. So instead of calling it an expression, we'll call it a polynomial because we have all these terms kind of added up together with each other. And as we look at this, this polynomial, we'll notice something about it. And that if we notice that these are written in descending order. And so the idea of these degrees, so this is put up here degree of 3, 2, 1, and 0. And so we write this in descending order, and this is something that we call standard form of polynomials. Now you probably remember standard form from algebra, which means something completely different. Um, but here we have the standard form of polynomials. It's just a way that we write polynomials from highest degree to lowest degree. And so the next thing that we're going to look at is something that we call quadratic terms and something that we call linear terms. Now quadratic terms are basically a name for terms that would have a degree of 2. Now typically this is reserved for a single variable, not necessarily with multiple variables, but the idea is that if you see a term with a degree of 2, we're going to call that a quadratic term. Now if you see a term with a degree of 1, that's something that we're going to call a linear term. So as we look at these two examples here below, we can go ahead and identify the quadratic term and the linear term. So the first one, we have 3x to the third plus x squared minus 2x. And so here, this plus x squared is going to be our quadratic term. And then the minus 2x, since that's a degree of 1, is going to be our linear term. And so really we're just looking at the degrees and whether it's x squared or x to identify quadratic or linear. Now with the next one, we have x to the fourth minus 7x. And for this one, we have a minus 7x, which is going to be our linear term. And if we notice, there's nothing else. And so there is no quadratic term. And so sometimes there's going to be these terms, and sometimes there's not going to be these terms. Now we could write this out this way. And identify that there are really a quadratic term, but it's just going to be zero. So for this instance, it's just no quadratic term. And then those two examples just show us how we can identify quadratic and linear terms based on their degree. Now as we move into this next top topic or this concept, we're looking at greatest common factor or what we would call GCF. Now we've seen greatest common factor before, but typically what we would be talking about would be the relationship of two different numbers. We wanted to figure out what kind of numbers would divide into um, each one of those and what the highest would be. It works a little bit different now that we have expressions, but we can kind of think back to the prime factoring that we did. So I'm going to go ahead and prime factor both of these. So first of all, we have 8 times x times x, which would be kind of just spelling out our coefficient and our two variables that are represented. And then as I go with my factor tree, I realize that I have 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x as a prime factorization of 8x squared. And I can do the same thing with 12x as well. So I start off with 12 times x, and then that splits to 4 and 3 and 2 and 2, and so that gives me 2 times 2 times 3 times x. 
Now when I look at greatest common factor, I can just look at this prime factorization that I have. So I have the two prime factorizations of these two numbers. And then I just look for what they have in common. So for example, they both have two factors of 2, and they both have one factor of x. And so when I write this in terms of greatest common factor, the GCF of 8x squared and 12x is 2 times 2 times x, or what we can just call 4x. So the idea here is that we're able to break apart these expressions and understand what kind of multiplies together to create both of them. And as I look at kind of this all together, so when we remove these things, I would say I have a greatest common factor of 4x, and then what's left behind would be 2x and 3 from this side. And we're going to go into detail of what that means. So we're basically removing this greatest common factor as we move along and factor these things. And so we have some basic steps in order to factor using the greatest common factor. We're going to highlight some of these. So the first thing is we're going to find factors using our greatest common factor um, each term has in common. So we're going to look at each of the terms that we're given and we're going to look for these common factors. The second thing is that we're going to factor out or we're going to divide these away. So whenever we talk about factoring, factoring out or removing factors, we're technically dividing. And so we're going to use those factors and factor them out. And then we're going to write those and what is left in the form a times parentheses b plus c. And so this will almost take kind of the form of some kind of distributive property over multiple terms. Um, but the idea is that we can use our distributive property to check to make sure that we factored correctly. And so let's take a look at this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at each term individually and identify what factors that they might have in common. And so first we're just going to look at the greatest common factor between 4, 12, and we're just going to call it 8. We're going to leave that negative as it is right now. Now we can prime factor this, and so I would encourage you to prime factor it if you would like to, but our greatest common factor between each one of these numbers would be the largest number that divides into each one of them. It's not going to be any bigger than the smallest number, and so our greatest common factor is 4. So we can remove a common factor of 4 from each one of these terms. And now that we have the numbers taken care of, what we can do is we can look at now the exponent of these. Now what we have to keep in mind is we're looking at kind of the total exponents that are represented. And so that kind of leads us to where our degree was. Um, so with this first one, there is three x's that are available, two x's that are available, and one x that is available. And we're going to look at what they share together. Well, if you look at it, they all share at least one x. And so kind of a general rule of thumb is you, if they all have the same variable, you can take the smallest exponent. So this one has 1, and so they can each kind of give away one variable of x. Now the tricky part of this is kind of when we look at step 2, which is to factor these out or divide them away. So in a sense, we're going to be removing them, but not just like taking them away using subtraction. It's technically division. And so what we're going to have is if I was to remove a factor of 4x from 4x to the third, I would be left with 4 divided by 4, which would be 1, and then x squared, or x to the third, kind of removing an x would give me x to the second. And then so I move on to the next term, plus if I divide away a 4 from 12, that leaves me with 3. I remove one of the x term, one of the x variables, which leaves me with 3x, and then minus divide away a 4 gives me 2, and then kind of canceling those x's out, if you will, leaves me with just 2 with no variable on there. Now I told you, step 3, we're going to write this with a form of distributive property, so we're going to put parentheses around this, and then in front, we're actually going to write our greatest common factor. So this would be 4x can be divided into or multiplied into to give us this up top. So the concept of what we're looking for is here. This is our greatest common factor. And then this piece right here is what's left over. And so by removing these factors, we kind of divide it away, not subtract or anything like that.
and so we can go with each one of these to see what they have in common, remove that, and then write out what is left. And so a couple more examples of this. You know, the first one we have 5v to the fifth plus 10v to the third. We want to look at what they have in common, so I'm going to write over here my greatest common factor. First of all, we can look at just the numbers. The greatest common factor between 5 and 10 is simply just 5. And how many v's do they share in common? Well, they have three v's in common, so my greatest common factor is 5v to the third. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down, 5v to the third. And then I'm going to start in parentheses, and inside the parentheses is everything that's left over. So if I take 5 divided by 5, that leaves me with just 1. I'm never left with nothing. I always factor down to at least 1. And then so I have v to the 5th, and I'm removing v to the 3rd. So that leaves me with v to the 2nd. So if we look at this, that accounts for 5 total v's. So I have 3 that I removed, and I have 2 left over. And then plus... 10 divided by 5, which gives me 2, and then I'm removing v to the third, and I have v to the third, so I'm left with nothing else except for just a 2. And then I can go ahead and close those parentheses, and then this is my final kind of result, or my final product, which would be 5v to the third multiplied 1v squared plus 2. If I distribute that here and here, I'll still get 5v to the fifth, 10v to the third just like I originally had. Next problem works a similar way but except this time not every term shares that that variable of b. So first of all I'm going to look for my greatest common factor between the numbers. So between 5, 15, and 30 it's going to be just 5 because it's never going to be any bigger than the smallest value. They all don't share a b so it can't be a common factor. So my only greatest common factor is going to be 5. So I'll write that down with a set of parentheses. I factor out 5 from b, 5b to the third, and I'm left with b to the third, or 1b to the third. Plus, factor out 5 from 15b gives me 3b. And then minus, factor out a 5 from 30 would give me 6. So the idea of factoring is kind of dividing away um, and seeing what times what or what multiplies with this greatest common factor to give us each one of these individual terms. So here, times 5, and then times 5 would give us 15b, and then times 5 would give us minus 30. And finally, our steps to kind of identify these terms and to kind of look at, after we factor, what would be our particular you know, quadratic terms or what would be our linear terms, we need to be able to factor in order to do that. So we have a couple steps. So obviously first, if we simplify, so we have to see if something can simplify first. Um, we're going to put in standard form, so we're going to put this from highest to lowest degree. And then we're going to factor it using our greatest common factor. So just kind of like we did on those last examples, we're going to take this and we're going to kind of break it down into its individual pieces. And then based on those degrees that are left over, we're going to decide what would be our linear term and what would be our quadratic term. So first of all, when I look at this problem, I have to identify some greatest common factor between each one of these. But before I would do any of that stuff, I have to ask myself, is this simplified? And so if I look closely enough at this, this here and this here are like terms because they both have x squared, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. And by combining those two like terms, I have negative 96 and positive 48, which give me a negative 48x squared. And so from this point, I can decide on my greatest common factor. So if I look closely enough, I can see that 24 and 48 are multiples of each other, so you just times 24 by 2 and you get 48. So they would both have, in common, 24. Now if you look at the exponents themselves, this has three x's, this has two x's total, and so they both share x to the second, because they both have two x's to kind of give to the party, if you want to think of it that way. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my greatest common factor, so 24x squared, 
and in parentheses I'm going to look at what's left over. So 24 divided by 24 is 1. I have 3, I took away 2, so that gives me x. And then minus 48 divided by 24 is simply just 2, and that's what's left over. So when I look at this, here's my final factored form. And so 1, I look for my quadratic term, but I'm only looking at it in terms of what's left over. I'm not looking for you know, what my greatest common factor is, because they would all always have that in common. So I'm only kind of investigating what's left over. And so I do not have a quadratic term because I do not have an x squared. And so I do see a linear term, though, which when I have a variable of just degree 1. And so 1x would be my linear term. And so that's going to do it for this video of factoring and factoring by greatest common factor.